What you doing, Otaku? I am DAC, and I went to go finally see Tokyo Godfathers, the remastered version that came out. It was in theaters uh, for a couple of days this past Monday and Wednesday. Um, originally came out in 2003, so yeah, it's been 17 years. Never heard of it until it came back in theaters, but regardless, it's directed by Satoshi Kon. It is based lightly kind of off of a Peter Kynes novel called Three Godfathers, which makes complete sense because this movie is about in present day Tokyo on Christmas, um, three homeless people. Um, one is Gen, um, someone who was a father, is a father. Um, Hana, someone who wants to be a mother and obsesses over that the whole movie. And then Miyuki, who is just a runaway kid. And what happens is on this Christmas day, they find a little baby who they eventually name Kyoko. And the name Kyoko happens to be a couple other people's names as the story goes along. Now, I'm not going to completely go through this whole story of a 17 year old movie, but there are parts I want to talk about. And first of all, the movie starts kind of slow and they kind of put in these religious things, which I'm, I'm not crazy about in general. But they really, it seems like in the beginning, they're really pressing this whole religious thing. They're like, oh, Kyoko's like this little angel baby that they found and Hana wants to be the mother to it. And, you know, there's a couple times Gin and Miyuki are like, if she's, if this baby's so blessed, why was it abandoned? And it's like, yeah, why? But these aren't pushed as hard as the movie goes along because then it starts picking up the pace. They keep getting into these situations and it kind of just keeps rolling and it kind of snowballs a little and not. And it, it gets really good. Even though I started slow, I was like, uh, once it got going, it was going and it was great. And I really like where it's going. But I have to push past this one thing that makes the movie happen and it's their bad decisions. Now, let's just talk about the one bad decision that they make right away. And that is not turning over this baby to the police right away. Gene is like, hey, give the baby to the police. If we're three homeless people, we obviously aren't taking care of ourselves. We can't take care of baby. Of course they don't do this. And it keeps like, okay, this bad thing's already happened. <laughs> we almost lost it. Turn in the police now. I no. And then it's like, by the time it's too late, they find someone who claims to be the mother. It's not actually, she stole the baby. They give it to her. And then there's a whole chase at the end. And it's like, if they would have just turned in the baby to the police, the police would have gotten word that there was a stolen baby from a hospital. And then the whole situation would have been settled. But of course, that isn't what makes the story happen. The story is about these three characters coming and like finding more of themselves, finding like their past bad decisions did not need to, you know, land them where they are. They just continue kept making bad decisions. That's what I'm getting from the story. Cause again, he was, um, a gambling addiction that got him to where he was. He made up this whole story about how his wife and daughter died and how he was a bicyclist and he lost all his money on a one-time bet that went bad and then they died because he couldn't pay them. Hana, what was it, was working in a bar, made one mistake because someone insulted um, and then had a relationship breakup or some kind of relationship problem and then just ran away and that was kind of their whole backstory but then realizing once they go back that ended up not being a big deal anyway so running away was like pointless or misunderstood and then Miyuki is a daughter of a cop and I guess she is something happened to her pet cat she blamed it on her father and stabbed him <laughs> It doesn't really say much more than that, except for she goes on a run, her father's been looking for her. So it doesn't really say anything about if there was, the father actually did anything. It's just, it's a bunch of misunderstandings and bad decisions being made the whole time. And that's kind of 
where this whole story is going. And by the time they realize what they actually need to do, it's too late. And there's a bunch of little things like Ging reconnects with his sister who, not sister, daughter, <laughs> whose name also happens to be Kyoko. Um, Miyuki at the very end sees her dad. Um, and yeah, it's like, yeah, mainly misunderstandings, bad decisions. That's what the whole thing is. But besides that, there is a lot of humor in this movie for the grim circumstances that are these three characters. And it's really nice that they can keep this going. And it is pretty funny at times. And, like, <laughs> even putting it past, like, yeah, they're homeless. And, yeah, some of the stuff is kind of their fault. But then there's also, like, people looking down on them just because they're homeless. But then there's still the reality of it. And I'm like, yeah, this is how people are going to think. Um, I mean, I live in Honolulu. There's a lot of homeless people here. I see the perspective as, you know, someone who's not in that position. And I understand it. I know where they're coming from. And yeah, it's a shame that's happening to them. And no, you don't know all the story of how this, all this happens. So this is a nice story for like, these are the stories of how people got to where they are and what they're doing. And like, there's nothing wrong with these characters. It's just circumstances. That's all it is. Now, there's another part of the movie. Barely has anything to do with the story. But, um, this uh, Latino guy tries to assassinate somebody. He ends up kidnapping Miyuki and Kyoko. And as he's being taken away by this taxi driver who comes throughout the movie. One of the humorous parts. Anyways, he only speaks in Spanish. And there's no subtitles at all. Because, like always, I go and I somehow end up seeing the dub versions of everything. But, this Spanish isn't dubbed at all. And, I'm so glad I understand enough Spanish because it clues me in a little bit. It makes him seem like a bad guy because you try to assassinate someone. But then it's also, he starts talking about milk and he takes him to this woman who, and it turns out, yeah, it's not bad guy, just more circumstances and stuff. You don't get the backstory on exactly why all that happens. It kind of just happens and is forgotten. Then eventually Hana shows up and takes the two back whatever. Gene finds another homeless guy who ends up dying, but they make his death humorous also. So, yeah, it's just this whole back and forth of like humor and grim, but it's like life, reality, trying to make the best out of the worst. Who knows? And, you know, it just makes you really appreciate what this story is going for. Now, Enough of the actual story and the brief bits of what I liked and what I saw. There was another part that I really like after movies like this. And it was just a little extra clip talking about the art. And I'm not going to go too much into it. It's just a cool thing to see. But it also makes you appreciate animation and how much detail and work they do into movies like this. Especially for a movie that was 17 years old. And it being remastered, you get to see all this. And they talk about how they start and they take pictures of scenes and then they recreate their scenes and then they add even more to make this feel, scene feel lived in. It's just a really cool thing to see. But it's just, it's a separate opinion. But I really like going to movies and they being experiences. I, it's like I'm paying all this money not just to see a movie, but I want to be experienced. I don't know if I mentioned before, but I think. I, no, I think I have mentioned it. Movies shouldn't be less than two hours. And then getting extra stuff while you're there, it's an experience, not just a movie. Anyways, going on with that. That is Tokyo Godfathers. And one last point I'll point out it's like, why is it called Godfathers? Yes, they're in Tokyo. And yes, they're kind of being godparents to this kid. But at the very end, the couple who the baby actually belongs to is just like, hey, we want to make these three people godfathers. Okay, well that's a... Okay. Did they put that in there just to satisfy the name? Because they thought it was humans? I don't know. But what do you think? Have you seen this movie? Did you see it when it first came out? Almost two decades ago? Man, I don't know how I missed it. It seems like something I would have found eventually. Glad I finally got to see it though. But let me know what you think of the movie and about what's going on with other anime movies, what's going on in the anime, whatever. All kinds of stuff. Just let's talk about it. But... 
If you like what I say, like the video. If you want to see me talk more about anime and all kinds of other stuff, subscribe to my channel. Until then, thank you for watching. I'm the AC and bye.